afternoon, everybody. The um, Committee on Rules of the Minikunta Quatrun and Lesetur and Guahan will go ahead and call to order. The time is 2.07 p.m. And I would like to now ask the Committee on Rules Director to please take roll. Senator St. Nicholas. Present. Senator St. Nicholas, present. Senator Nelson. Present. Senator Nelson, present. Speaker Cruz. Present. Speaker Cruz, present. Vice Speaker Terlahi. Present. Vice Speaker Terlahi, present. Secretary Bisco Lee. Present. Secretary Bisco Lee, present. Senator Ada. Present. Senator Ada, present. <coughs> Senator St. Augustine. Present. Senator St. Augustine, present. Senator Uggen. <laughs> Senator Uggen, present. Senator Rodriguez. Senator Rodriguez, absent. Senator Espaldon. Senator Espaldon, absent. Senator Camacho Torres. Present. Senator Camacho Torres, present. Mr. Chair, there is a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Director. I'd like to um, ask if there is a motion to excuse our members not present. So moved. Uh, moved by Speaker Cruz, uh, seconded by uh, Senator Torres. No objections to order. We'll now move on to the um, ratification of quorum minutes. This being our first committee and rules meeting, we'll go ahead and waive that agenda item and proceed on to our committee and rules business document tracking uh, prepared by Secretary Bisco Lee. We do have in your packets um, the document tracking sheets for the committee on rules. And at this time, I would like to yield to Secretary Lee for any further tracking items. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Buenas and half a day, everyone. Our legislative secretary report to date is as follows. 16 appointments submitted by the governor and all are pending. Two zone changes submitted by the governor and both have been approved by the governor's office. One set of proposed rules and regulations governing telepharmacy practice across, across Guam state lines pursuant to the administrative adjudication law submitted by the Guam Board of Examiners for Pharmacy with the potential due date to lapse into law on May 20th 2017 should the Committee on Health, Tourism, Military Affairs, and the Senior Citizens not take action. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, first on the session agenda, we do have the reports of Standing Committee Chairpersons. And uh, as for <coughs> this Committee on Rules meeting, we do have several items that have cleared our rules processing. The bills cleared for the session agenda for consideration by the committee are bills number 3-34 COR, bill number 4-34 COR as amended by the committee, and bill number 9-34 COR. Do we have any members who'd like to make any motions to place these bills on the session agenda? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that 3-34 and 9-34 be placed on the session agenda. There's a motion by Speaker Cruz to place bill number 3-34 and bill number 9-34 on the session agenda. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by um, uh, Senator Nelson. No objections. So ordered. Okay. Senator Evan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move for the placement of bill number 4-34 COR as amended by the committee. Uh, uh, just for the record, Mr. Chairman, when initially when the legislation was introduced, there were two subsequent legislative measures, bill number 5-34 and bill number 6-34, which was all gonna be uh, collaborative in nature and companion pieces of legislation. Bill number five references uh, the direct link between the cabinet members and the executive appointees and their salary link with the chief executive, the governor of Guam, as well as the lieutenant governor of Guam. And bill number six would clarify language in law that any increase in legislative or appointed members or the chief executive salary will not take place until the completion of the next general election. So that's why those three pieces of, of legislation were considered companion, but considering that in fact bill number 5-34 and 6-34 are not readily available for next week's session, I'd like to move for the placement of bill number 4-34 COR as amended by the committee on the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Ergen. So noted on your um, e explanation there regarding bill number five and bill number six, uh, as chairman of the committee that has those bills under jurisdiction, it's been uh, my prerogative that we would first want to uh, see through bill four, and then as soon as bill four has had its uh, success or failure, 
we will move forward bills five and six depending on whether or not bill four is uh, successful. So uh, on the motion to place bill number 4-34 on the session agenda by Senator Ugin, do we have a second? Seconded by Senator San Augustine. No objections, so ordered. So the agenda items for all bills numbers three, four, and 9-34 have been moved and seconded to be placed on session agenda. We now have uh, the second item that's been cleared for placement is a uh, resolution number 27-34. Is there a motion to place <coughs> resolution 27-34? Moved by Senator Nelson to place resolution 2734 on the session agenda. Is there a second? I would object. Mr. Second by uh, Secretary Lee. And are there any objections? Yes, I would object. I, I would ask that this bill, I mean, this resolution, I wasn't aware it's going to be put on the agenda right away. Um, I would ask that more input be solicited on this, this measure um, and that it be set for the next session, perhaps. Uh, your, your request is noted. It's been moved mm -hmm. and seconded to place resolution 27-34 on the mm -hmm. session agenda. It has been properly noticed for a public hearing. It has had a public hearing and there has been participation and testimony transmitted for that public hearing. So on the objection to placing resolution 27-34 on the session agenda, yes. Senator Ruggins. Not necessarily in the question, but additional comments. I know that there were some concerns raised about whether in, in particular a, or whether a particular jurisdiction, I believe it was American Samoa, uh, I may be corrected, whether in fact they support an initiative that is being pursued that would be supported by resolution number 27-34. And that was mentioned during the course of the public hearing that there may be concerns. My question is, as reported out, were those concerns heeded and researched so that we don't unnecessarily incorporate and include that particular jurisdiction in our resolution? Because right now it's carte blanche. It, it applies to all US territories. It applies to other jurisdictions, DC, that presently their residents do not have that opportunity and that privilege to be able to right to vote, actually. So in this case, was that, was the resolution amended to reflect that particular concern? As the author of the resolution, I can comment that the purpose of the resolution is to provide um, Ilesa input, either in favor or against, depending on if the resolution passes, to include Guam as a um, in interested party on the voting rights uh, lawsuit that's being pursued right now in, uh, in, uh, in the, I believe it's the, um, the circuit courts. And so the resolution does not uh, in any way speak towards advocating on behalf of any other territory other than Guam. And so it only expressly um, states that Ilesa Latura in Guahan supports the efforts for securing voting rights for the territories. It does include a provision there that would transmit Ilesa Latura in Guahan's resolution to those other jurisdictions. And the purpose for that is to communicate to them that Ilesa Latura in Guahan has in fact adopted that resolution. If the resolution fails, the resolution will not be transmitted to those jurisdictions. So on the objection. If I, if I may, sure. uh, like I said, it's not, it's not an objection. It's just concerns that were raised in the course of the public hearing. If I uh, recall correctly, there was a particular provision that alluded to all of these jurisdictions pursuing the right to vote under this uh, resolution, you know, the process at this point in time through the litigation. And it was shared with us during the public hearing that one of those recognized jurisdictions in that particular caption or provision requested and has insisted that they not be part of the consideration. So that's why I was asking if the resolution, if a little bit additional research was conducted to ensure that that particular jurisdiction, if in fact they have requested to be excluded from any consideration, that the resolution truly reflect the wishes also of that jurisdiction. Because I think that you look at the, the resolution and, and I would think that we're all proponents of the right to vote. Uh, certainly, I'm not objecting at the resolution, just making sure that we present it in a way that, that is truly reflective of the other jurisdictions. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's noted for the record. Um, the, just to clarify also, the committee has not received any communication from any other jurisdictions that they felt that the uh, language of the resolution was not appropriate. However, um, if this resolution is placed on the session agenda and you do have concerns, you may raise it on the floor at that time. On the objection, uh, all those in um, favor of- Mr. Chair, if I may just make a comment. This, this resolution purports to seek for Guam, um, uh, or yeah, for Guam citizens, the right to vote. But I think in, we have in statute already uh, a mandate of how the government of Guam has decided to pursue its status, and that we, we have decided to pursue status as a whole, to pursue a plebiscite. And I just think that, that the, this, the implication of this case, I just think 
we, we need to solicit more input from the rest of the community if that's how we're going to pursue our status, our right to vote. Well, you know, p perhaps we need to be sure too that it's not going to be an indication to Congress that that's, that's what we want for our status. And I think uh, there's precedent that, you know, Congress is um, kind of wi willing and looking to see indications from territories like ours and, and we'll hold them to it like it, it has for Puerto Rico, I think. And, and we don't want to be held to something like that if that's all we're going to get and as opposed to pursuing our entire status. I think, I, so that's, I just think that there, it's a little bit bigger issue than that than just the one court case. And it has big implications for what we already have in our, co co uh, our code as to how we're going to pursue status. And, and I would just ask this, this committee to please, uh, let's just get a little bit more input on that and get the c more of the community. There, were really, there was really nobody to testify at the hearing. We got some written testimony from the proponents of the lawsuit, but not really from the rest of this community. And I would just ask that we just try to do that a little bit, a little bit more, Mr. Chair. Well, several items. Uh, first, I believe you may be confused as to the nature of the resolution. It does not at any point speak to the status of the territory. It simply speaks towards a lawsuit that's trying to ensure that a resident of this territory under its current status are able to avail of the right to vote. Secondly, uh, you were present at the uh, public hearing that was held for this uh, legislation, I'm sorry, this resolution. And uh, if you were interested in soliciting additional testimony for the record, um, you may have been able to do so at that time. However, the committee will go ahead and note your um, concerns, and we will go ahead and uh, vote on the objection. There's been an objection to placing resolution 27-34 on the session agenda. All those in favor of placing resolution 27-34 on the session agenda, please indicate by raising your hands. Motion carries. Uh, that would exhaust uh, resolution 27-34. And now we move on to the third item on the session agenda, the nominations that have been cleared for the session. We have the appointment of William D. Nault to serve as member of the Guam Visitors Bureau Board of Directors. We have the appointment of Mr. Francisco Santos to serve as member of the Guam Port Authority Board of Directors. We have the appointment of Mr. Raymond Schnabel to serve as insurance business officer representative of the Guam Banking and Insurance Board. The appointment of Candy C. Oku Okuhama to serve as member of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board and the appointment of Earl Garrido to serve as a member of the Cockpit License Board. The committee will now entertain any motions to place any of these nominations on the session agenda. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that all be placed on the uh, session agenda. Um, I, I would like to bifurcate the, um, the individual appointments only because they are for different uh, agencies. And uh, if there are other senators who may want to, um, for various reasons, comment or object, uh, I would like to afford them the opportunity. So go ahead and tackle them one nomination at a time, if we oh. can tackle the first appointment. All right, um, Mr. Chairman, I'd go with um, appointment of William D. Nault to the um, Guam Business Bureau. On that appointment, are there any objections? If no objections, so ordered. Then I'd go down to um, appointment of Raymond Schnabel to the um, Guam Banking and Insurance Board. On that appointment, are there any objections? If no objections, so ordered. Appointment of, oh, I, I skipped the name. Uh, appointment of Francisco G. Santos. On that appointment, are there any objections? No objections, so ordered. And appointment of Candy C. Okahama. On that appointment, are there any objections? No objections, so ordered. And appointment of Earl J. Garrido. On that appointment, are there any objections? No objections, so ordered. Yes. That will exhaust all of the items that we have available for this session agenda. Um, we will now move on to the next agenda item, extension of remarks. Any of our colleagues have any items they'd like to mention at this time in the committee on rules? If none, the committee will go ahead and entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. Moved by Speaker Cruz, second by Senator St. Augustine. No objection, so ordered. The committee will now adjourn at 221 this afternoon. Thank you all very much. <laughs>